Unclean spirit, I command you to leave right now. Unclean spirit of depression, I command you to leave right now. Unclean spirit of bondage and addiction, I command you in the name of Jesus, go! You know what that's called? Enforcing your victory. We're going to have to get filled with the spirit 21 days. You're going to cut, you're, you're going to stop eating for 21 days. I'll show you how to do that. Some of you guys got real quiet. See, all of a sudden I was praising. What, 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 okay. What? I'll show you how to do it, but everybody's going to fast at their level, but it has to be a stretch. Okay, you can't act like, I mean, you, you can't, I'm not, there's not just fast. Well, I'm going to fast TV. No, you ain't fasting TV alone. You're going to fast food and TV if you want, but not just TV. Well, I'm going to fast fish. Why fish? I don't like fish. No, you ain't fasting where you don't like. You're going to fast in and out burgers where you're going to fast and eat it now. That's what. You're going to fast your donuts and all Krispy Kreme and all that. Hey. All right. How many are ready to declare war on the enemy? And I, I, I'm going to say, I'm not careless about this. I'm not careless. Oh, I think the devil's a joke. I just know who God, my God is, and I need to know who my God is. And what I'm saying is, right now, I'm going to seek God. And if I seek Him first, come on, if I seek Him first, everything's going to be added other than me. And the one that's in me is greater than anything I'm going to face out there. I'm not being cocky. My strength and my faith is in Him. I need you, Jesus. Are you guys ready for 21? Uh, what? I said 21 day fast. I didn't say, are you ready for 2024? 20, you ready 20? I know you're ready. We got to spread this though. This year is not a year of getting it and keeping it. This year is about getting on fire and spreading the fire. Come on, let, let, there, let there be known in hell right now that there's a Holy Spirit fire that's going to spread throughout San Bernardino, the Inland Empire, and the California, United States of America, and the world. We're getting filled with the fire to spread the fire, to spread the fire, to spread the fire. Now, now, now if you're going to spread the fire, you're going to have to stay on fire. And you're not going to stay on fire if you don't kindle the fire. Like, you got to blow on that thing. Every Wednesday, every Sunday, every day, you're just blowing on that fire and adding wood to that fire. You're saying, this fire is never going to go out. You're never going to be on fire without being intentionally on fire. Amen? Come on. So let's, let's pray and let's talk about the power of fasting. Father, we just thank you. Have your way in this fast, Lord. We dedicate it to you for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, speak to us. Amen. Amen. So what are we going to do to prepare for the greatest harvest year of our lives? I, I, I want I, I just you to I use the word prepare. Someone say prepare. Amen. Don't expect to have great results without great planning and preparation. If you're not intentional about your spiritual life, it's not gonna, you're not going to be accidentally on fire. You're not going to be accidentally successful. You're not going to be accidentally victorious. You're not going to be accidentally full of the Spirit. You're not going to accidentally know the Word of God. You're going to have to prepare and plan to do that. And a 21-day fast breaks bad habits and starts new habits. The purpose of a 21-day fast is not to do a fast, and by the time we're done with the fast, go back to your old lifestyle. The purpose of doing a fast is to come out of it with a lifestyle that you've never had in your whole life and breaking habits that have been held, holding on to you, bad habits, habits that have been destroying your life, habits that have been keeping you in cycles of self-destruction, and you're declaring war. It said, I'm going, I'm fasting, but I'm coming out with a new lifestyle. I'm coming out with new habits. I'm coming out with new thinking. I'm coming out. I'm coming out victorious. I went and defeated. I'm coming out with joy. But someone say planning and, pre planning and preparation. We're at the beginning of the year. What comes before building? Planning and preparation. In Proverbs 24, 27 says this. Do your planning and prepare. What does it say? Do your planning and prepare. That's the idea. Stop letting a year go by without a plan, without goals, and without preparing to have a great year. 
Prepare your fields before building your house. What is it saying? Is before you start building, before you go into a year, get a plan. Get some goals. Prepare for a great year. So we as a church are being intentional. There's a lot of people this year saying, this is going to be the greatest, greatest year ever. And I will say, what? why? Why? Because you declare it? No, if you keep doing what you've been doing and thinking the way you've been thinking and hanging around the people you've been hanging around and keeping those same bad habits, or you're saying that you're going to have a better year is only fooling yourself. you got to start doing what you've never done and be extreme about it. See, some of the breakthroughs that you want in your life, you got to be extreme about it. And if you don't get extreme about it, they're going to remain in your life. you got to want it. Someone say, I want it. So we're going to do, this is a few practical things, six practical things we're doing. Acquire the daily growth book and study it daily. If you've not got your daily growth book, it's in the foyer. Pick it up. Um, just start, it, it costs like three or four Starbucks coffees, and you just go over there and get it. You're fasting anyway, so you should have all the money that you need for that book. All right, sign up for Next Step Growth Journey. So if you haven't signed up for Holy Wars 1, 2, and 3, sign up. That's going to be intentional. If you don't sign up, nothing's going to change. If you don't get the growth book and start studying the Bible every single day, nothing's going to change. Number three, attend all impartation services, the 24th through the 28th. This is the idea. We have special services from one of the top, from, from some of the top right now Christian um, speakers and men of God in the world, they're coming here. This is going to be our greatest impartation ever. They're coming here. Daniel Kalinda, he took, he's, 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 he's actually the mentee for, for Reinhard Bonnke. He's going to be here traveling around the whole world. He's going to be here. Ron Carpenter, he's going to be here. Isaiah Salivar, he's going to be here. And, and, you, and guess who else is going to be here? I'm going to be here. Are you guys ready? Come on. Are you ready? So you got to put it on your schedule. This is what I've learned about life. You're not serious until you schedule it. Are you scheduling a Bible study in your home? Are you scheduling coming to church? You should get a calendar and say, Wednesday night, I'm in church. Sunday morning, I'm in church. I, I, my DG's on, th uh, on, on Thursday nights. Uh, there, there you go. But you got to start scheduling. But on the 24th through the 28th, there's nothing else that you need to do than be here and get the impartation. This is going to be the year of the harvest. And God is sending some of the greatest harvesters in the United States of America and the world to us to get an impartation. How many are going to be here on the 24th through the 28th? Write it down. Someone say write it down and bring somebody. Number four, give a first fruit offering January 21st. Number five. Set seven top goals for the year. You need to set some goals for the year. In the daily growth book, you're going to see there, there's a section with your top goals. I've learned this. If you're too lazy to write it, and if you still got a problem, so I guarantee you three days of not eating will solve a lot of problems. You won't have the energy to argue anymore. Maybe we should start doing that. You guys are arguing, go to the mountain. In Spanish, la montaña. La Montaña, yes. So this is what happened. Fasting, they, they rarely ever counsel. If someone has, uh, came, comes into a great problem or urgent need, they, they're standing up to go pray. If they return with the problem still unmet, they tell them to go and fast and pray for a week. So three didn't work. How about another seven? Okay. Now, if that didn't work, then after the ten days, they, they did not... It, they did not think it was possible that a person would, they, they would tell them this, then go, then go for 40 days. <laughs> they did not think it possible that a person would ever return to them again with a problem still after 40 days. They probably died out there. But you know the purpose of fasting is for you to die to yourself. You know what's the problem with America? We're, we become, we become a hedonistic society. That means that we're pleasure-driven instead of purpose-driven. 
If it feels good, I want to do it, and nobody can tell me not to do it. You're right. You could do whatever you want. You could ruin your life. You could ruin your relationships. You could ruin your body. You could ruin your future. Chase after pleasure, and I guarantee you, by the time you're done, you've ruined everything you've touched, and you've become very dangerous and addicted. But this is what Jesus wants to do is set us free from the power of the lust of the eyes, the power of the lust of the, eye, the, the, lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Come on, it's time for us to make up our minds. I love God that any single pleasure the devil could offer me. So what did Jesus say? What did God say about fasting? He tells us, he tells us fasting was his idea. He goes, announce a corporate fast. Tell everybody, tell the whole church to fast. Look at this in Joel 1.14. He goes, announce a time of fasting. Call the people together for a solemn meeting. Bring the leaders and all the people of the land into the temple of the Lord your God. And cry out to him there. This is what's happening today. We're saying, God, we're crying out to you. We need you more than ever. And this is where we're going into, we're going into 2024. And as we're going into 2024, the devil has strategies. And the Bible says the Bible says that we got we got we got to we got to put on the full armor of God so we able to stand against the wiles and the strategies of the devil. The devil has a strategy to kill you, take you out, destroy your family, destroy your health, destroy your marriage, destroy your future, and at the end send you to hell for eternity. But we understand we're in a real battle, so we're getting really ready in this season, and we're saying, devil, you could try whatever you want, but we got the full armor of God, and we're going to be able to stand against your strategies, your wiles. As a matter of fact, before you do something, we'll know you're doing it. You ain't going to trick us no more. You're not going to get tricked by that, by, by that guy that acts like a Christian on, on Sundays so he could be there because he's after you. See, there's a lot. See, if you're not in the spirit, they'll trick you. But they, they're talking a the language. They're talking a the language. But can you discern their spirit? See, you won't be able to discern their spirit when you're not in the spirit. See, God wants you confident in him. Come on, young men, young ladies. It's time for you to stop. God, this is what I'm saying. It's time for you to stop being desperate and realize this. You're a woman of God. There's nobody like you. Come on. God has a plan for your life. And as long as you see yourself as rejected and unworthy, you're falling for the devil. It's time for you to get your dignity back, your identity back in the Lord. Come on. It's time for you to get that back. Let's call this meeting. Everybody seek the Lord. Number two, he will reward. This is what God says about fasting. He will reward us if we fast with the right motive. So if you fast with the right motive, I'll reward you. Look at this. But when you fast, comb your hair and wash your face. So why, why does he say comb your hair and wash your face? Because he doesn't want you to be fasting and people say, what's wrong? <laughs> well, brother, I don't know about you, but as for me, in 2024, oh, I can't breathe. Okay. <laughs> I'm seeking the Lord. I could barely walk right now, but this is what spiritual people do. It's all for the Lord. <laughs> he says, if you do that and you're looking to be look real good in front of somebody, trying to show off how spiritual you are, that's the only reward you're going to get. He goes, I don't reward that. If you want to clap from people, see, we got to get to the place that we're not looking for people approval. We're looking for God's approval because if we got God's approval, we got everything that we need. Give God some praise. Let's give him some praise. When you fast, comb your hair. Wash your face. <laughs> Sounds hood. Then no one will notice that you're fasting. No one will notice that you're fasting. It, no one needs to know you're fasting. Smile. Be happy. If you, if you have hunger pains, just, just, <laughs> just laugh. <laughs> Praise God. What's that? Why are you, why are you praising God? Ha, you don't even know. 
I'm going somewhere, no pain, no gain. I, you don't even understand. Right now, I'm defeating that lust. Right now, I'm defeating that rejection. Right now, I'm defeating that abuse that I got when I was a little girl, a little boy. Right now, I'm defeating every devil that's trying to face me in 2024. I'm going to deal with that complacency. I'm going to deal with that lack of discipline. I'm going to deal with that laziness. A little pain is going to cause a lot of gain. Is there anybody hungry for Jesus more than they're hungry for food? I know it's early. I mean, everybody's hallelujah right now because you, you, you just say, <laughs> hallelujah, get a pastor. We don't care about food. <laughs> yeah, it's because you just say, <laughs> let's see, let's see a Sunday you're still like this. Come on, I know you're going to be like this because there's something rising up in you. You're going to finally say, I'm done with the flesh. I'm done serving my flesh. I'm done serving my lust. I, this is my season to get filled with the Spirit and start praising Him with everything I got. Come on, are there any praisers, real praisers in here? <laughs> then no one will notice your fasting except your Father who knows what you do in private. See, when you seek him privately, he will reward you publicly. If you seek him privately, he will reward you what? See, when you have an anoint, when you have the touch of God on your life, when you have the anointing of God in your life, when you have the backing of God on your life, it's just said in different ways, you don't have to toot your own horn because God will confirm you. See when you see when when you when you see when you when when you don't when you don't have that on you and you're looking for people approval this is what happens you're always trying to get a clap or you're trying to get recognition because you're not secure of who you are but I'm telling you this, once you know who you are in the Lord and realize that you're nothing apart from him. And you say, man, right now, I got, uh, right now I'm seeking the Lord. And if it wasn't for him, I'd still be strung out. If it wasn't for him, I'd be a liar. If it wasn't for him, I'd be an adulterer. If it wasn't for him, I'd be on those streets right now. If it wasn't for him, I'd be angry. If it wasn't for him, I'd be in a mental asylum. But there's something that happened when I called upon the name of Jesus. And it was only him that could set me free from that addiction that I've had for years I give him all the honor I give him all the glory and when you do that he backs you up he backs you up I love it I'm not I'm, not, I'm like me I'm nothing apart from Jesus but with Jesus forget it that's why we go into that's why we go into dangerous hoods pastor why are you going to dangerous hoods because we love them. We got the love of Jesus in us. And when God's not giving us a spirit of timidity, but power, love, and a sound mind. So we're going in there with the love of Jesus to help a captive, to help a gang member get set free and find Jesus Christ, his only Savior. So we're going in with love, and love conquers all fear. I remember, I remember that we were patrolling the hood. That's what we do. We patrol. You police that we're the Holy Ghost police. We're just making sure things are in order. So I remember I was with some pastors in my car. And we're patrolling a real bad hood, real bad hood. So as I pull into the hood, some guy is beating up a girl on, on the fence. So I stopped. I go, stop the car. Holy Ghost Patrol. And I go, hey, what's going on? With a smile. You know what happened? This is what he said. Pastor, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He started crying. He's attended the way we're lodged before. And, it, and I, I talked to her. We got, we, we got her some help. He ran the other direction. It was over. We're patrolling the same hood. All of a sudden, we're patrolling the hood. And there's a big gang fight that started. One gang, another gang. I go, stop the car. Under the Holy Spirit, I'm talking about. I'm not me trying to, because I don't know Kung Fu or Karate or MMA or nothing. <laughs> so we went in, we got out of the car, and we began to break up this fight. One of the guys was so demon-possessed, he came charging at me to get to the guy behind me. And when he charged at me, he couldn't get, he couldn't get to me. 
So he kept like, he couldn't get to me. So then he ran the other way, trying to run around the whole block, trying to get there. By the time he ran all the way around the block, he was so tired. The, 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 whole, the, whole, the whole fight was over. And, and we recruited one of the gang members to be a, one of our drummers in our church. By the time it was all done, I want you to understand, when you got the power of God and you're being led by the Spirit of God, you don't need to fear no devil because God has called you to help some people that are bound by the devil. That's called being rewarded openly. When you fast, God rewards you. When you fast, what? Now, this is interesting. This word reward means to deliver, restore. By the time you're done fasting, he's going to deliver something to you that you've needed. The package is on the way. Are you guys ready by the end of 21 days to get your delivery? The other thing the word means is restore. I love this. So he goes, when you fast with the right heart, not to be seen of men, but just to seek me, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to restore you. That word restore means, this is what it means, to soundness of mind, bring back to a state of health, to put back in former place of position or rank. Some of you guys thought you lost it all, and God says, nah, you didn't lose nothing because I'm a restoring God. See, you're, see you got to be careful that you're not so full of regret because of the mistakes that you've made. See, Jesus did not come to restore a whole bunch of goody two-shoes people. He's come to restore some people that have made some mistakes and say, man, I've messed up. I take personal responsibility, and God says, I take personal responsibility. As you're seeking me, don't you worry about your losses because I'm going to restore your rank. I'm going to restore your name. I'm going to restore your dignity. I'm going to restore your losses. Give God some praise. The reward of a fast is restoration. Those kids are coming back. Come on. The dream is coming back. The vision is coming back because God is the one that can restore you. Wait. Put me back in rank and position. Now, I'm talking to backsliders right now. Because I'm telling you, the devil is a condemner. He tempts you to sin, and then he beats you up with the club of the own sin he gave you. Like, how many lumps? One or two. Boop, 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 boop. Remember that cartoon back in the day? Some of you guys remember that back in the day, day. I want five lumps. Boop, 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 boop. Some of you guys have been living like that, lump after lump after lump after lump. And the devil's beating you up with your own, come on, the stick he gave you, that sin stick. And God is saying, come on, aren't you tired of the lumps? Don't you understand? If you call on me, I can restore your life. I can, come on, I can restore your dignity. I can restore your peace. I can restore your power. I can, come on, I can take you to a place of defeat, to victory. I am a restoring God. Seek me. You're going to find me. Soundness of mind. To perform. Look, it says, to place in position rank. I'm going to tell you this. God's call on your life and the gifts he put on your life are without repentance. You still got a call on your life. When you messed up, God already knew you messed up. But just be honest about your mess up and let God, sit, God, let, let God do this. What the devil meant for harm, let God turn it around for good for you. See, stop trying to hide the thing and say, I did mess up. I confess it. And God says, okay, I'll cleanse you. I'll deliver you. I'll restore you. And I'll go tell your real testimony. Don't tell that fake testimony. Do you know why some of us can't get right? you rather pride and to look good in people's eyes than be effective and purposeful. Who cares? Like, if you confess something to me, like, I'm not going to be shocked. I've heard it all. Well, I did this. I go, oh, okay, let's, let's forget. Let's find out why you did that, and let's get you delivered and set free, and let's get you restored. Are you guys ready for that? Because we serve a God that didn't come for the righteous, but he came for a whole bunch of sinners that had messed up, that would acknowledge, man, I messed up, and I'm nothing without you. Jesus, forgive me for trying to do life without you. Forgive me for coming to you and then going back to the vomit that you delivered me from. I'm not like a dog going back to the vomit. I did it, but I'm done with that. That's not my identity. I'm coming back to you, and I'm never going going back with your help. Say it with me. Restore. Restore. Wow. Oh, the devil hates this stuff right here. Talking about the devil? He, he specializes. I don't know if I believe in the devil. 
Well, this is what the devil specializes, so you know how to recognize him. He specializes in lies. Lies that you tell yourself. Destructive words you tell yourself. Some of you guys have the worst conversations in the world with yourself. I'm stupid. I'm dumb. I messed up so much. I want to die. And I'm not making fun of suicidal spirit. I'm just, I'm making fun of the demon that's talking to you. But, but understand that dumb demon is making you dumb. It's not allowing you to recognize that you serve a God, that he came to set you free and he restore you of all the pain and suffering. And what the devil meant for harm, God says, come on, I'm going to turn it into a ministry. I'm going to turn it into a testimony. Come on, don't get stuck on your past. Don't get stuck on your failure. Don't get stuck on your loss. Don't get stuck on the wrong things that you've done. Because join the club. Every single one of us have. I'm not giving a license to sin. I'm just telling you right now that if you have, admit it so God can set you free. Fill you with the spirit and Turn it into a testimony. One more praise for God. Okay. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. To perform miracles. That's what he's going to do for you. Say, I will perform miracles for you. I love this. Perform miracles, okay? I'm going to honor you. I'm going to bring you profit. I'm going to give you gain. And I'm going to, I'm going to crown you with authority. So, so by the time it's all said and done, as you seek me, you're going to come out with a crown of authority. That when you show up, demons are going to recognize you. You're going to go in one level and come out a whole nother level in the spirit. Who? 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 Me? Yeah, you. So don't take this as a joke and, and wear that crown all year long in the spirit. Don't, don't go and now get a crown and be like crazy and think we're a cult. Well, you start wearing crowns because I got a crown after my fast. <laughs> in the spirit. Someone say in the spirit. Do you know when you show up in the spirit? With spiritual crowns that God gives you, the demons recognize you. That's why when Jesus showed up, see, it was interesting. When Jesus was born, he wasn't born a prince. He was born a king. Every other king was born a prince and then he became a king. But they said, where is the newborn king? He, he was born with a spiritual crown. So when he showed up at the temple one day, he had a robe, I'm sure. He didn't have a physical crown, but the demon said, we know who you are. We can recognize that crown. We've seen that crown in the spiritual realm before. You're the Messiah. Why have you come to torment us before our time? What they recognize, they didn't recognize Jesus' face. They recognized Jesus' authority. See, and when you submit to God and you're saying, God, I'm going to fast and I'm going to put you first above food, this is what you're saying. When you submit to God 100% and you say, God, I'm willing to get, let go of the sin. I'm letting go of the compromise. I'm letting go of the, of, the, of, the, of the worldliness. I'm letting go of all that stuff because I want to be filled with you. And when you submit totally to God, the Bible says you can resist the devil and he's going to flee. But don't try to resist devils that you're submitted to. You got to break up. Someone said, break up. You got to break up. Some of you guys have been going, the Bible says don't be drunk with wine. And some of you guys have been getting drunk with wine. because, And then you start using scripture to justify your drunkenness. Well, Jesus drank wine, did he? How come you don't know any other scripture? But Jesus never got drunk like you. Faded like you, act like a fool like you, drunk drive like you, get angry like you. I know, but that's the grace of the Lord, though, for the rest of it. <laughs> Stop excusing the sins in your life that are destroying you. The Bible says, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. What God is saying, you're settling for something that was not meant to satisfy you. There's only one high that can satisfy you, and that's knowing Jesus and being filled with His Spirit. And God is saying, the reason you can't overcome your addiction is because you love it too much. And God is saying, you don't love me enough. And I'll tell you why. Because you never emptied yourself from that thing and be done with it so I could fill you with my Spirit and power. Give God praise. Come on. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to get on fire. Authority. Someone said authority. All right, we're, we're done. I, I, only, I, I got to the intro. I got through the intro. Sunday, we'll get through the rest. So, so come Sunday, I'll keep my fire. You keep your fire. Put it on your calendar. Sunday, what's my options? Nine and 11. And in Espanol, 1.30. Uno y media. Now, understand this. Stop, stop doing this. Stop saying something like this, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see is the language of failures. We'll see. Are you coming Sunday? I don't know. But if we ask you to go to a casino on Sunday, oh, oh, I mean, girl. See, that's the problem. You love the world more than you love God. God is their, your extracurricular activity. If you get to him, you, you, if you get them, but understand that you'll never be on fire. Well, I tried Jesus. You never tried Jesus. You tried being lukewarm. You tried to add Jesus to your mess. All right, all right. Just stay right here. We'll be all right. Just buckle your seat. We're okay. I'm trying to help you. We're just doing a little surgery to get you set free. You're, you think you have a temptation problem. It's what you have is a commitment problem. Until you get committed, you're not going to overcome that temptation. There has to be a time in your life, I'm done. And this fast, this 21 days, it's going to prove that. Now, there's three types of fast. Let's finish it with this. And then Sunday, we'll pick up the rest. How many of you want to find out? On Sunday, I'm going to talk about why we fast. It's going to, I gave you a lot of reasons already, but we're going to get deeper into this. It's going to be good. Get your, now, get your book. Write down your goals. Show up to church. Now, I'm going to write this down. Number one, a liquid fast. If you want to do 21-day liquid fast, that means only water, juices, and broth. You could also do a combination. That means you could start off with a liquid fast for seven days and then go into the second type of fast, a Daniel fast, if you want to. You can mix and match. Daniel fast, no meat, no sweets, drink only water and juices, eat only fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, and seeds for 21 days. The third one is intermittent fast. See, she wants the one that you just still eat. That's such... <laughs> So what's the third one? I don't that those two. I, I ain't doing that. I ain't that serious. I know I heard everything you said, but you know, <laughs> got to keep my own little. I got to keep my little twinkies. <laughs> I tell you, fasting when it's all said and done reveals us to us. I mean, I started fasting already and I, and I got hungry and I didn't realize it and I went into my my drawer where I got my candies I'm serious it happened today I go in there and there was a little Snickers this little big I didn't even think about it I went like this this is the best Snickers I ever tasted why does it taste so good and he goes you're fasting that's why I go oh yeah that's right I forgot I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me. So intermittent fast is fast until like 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. And then a light meal or whatever, t uh, whatever time you decide on, as long as it is a stretch and you're not practice and you're practicing food and self-denial, we're okay. But, but understand, we're not fast until 5 and then you do three meals to make up for the ones you lost. <laughs> Gourmet time. One meal, hometown buffet don't even exist. Golden Corral then. Ha, 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 Fat Albert. <laughs> What's one meal? It's just a long three-hour meal. Okay, so it's a light meal or salad, whatever you want. I could do Daniel fast at that time. Okay, fast and advice. If you mess up, don't let the enemy begin to condemn you. Just pick up where you left off like I did. Number two, start a, time, 
a time of daily devotions. Me and Lisa are having our daily devotions at 7 o'clock in the morning. So we get up every morning um, for 21 days straight. We're having devotionals. I'm, I'm putting it on my schedule. What I put on my schedule, I'm serious about. Number two, create a prayer list. What, what are you believing God will do in this fast this, and this year in the harvest? And put people you want to see saved, that's a good place to put them to. Remember, fasting without prayer is just a diet. So the purpose of fasting is to communicate with God. Don't get stressed about anything. Start praying about everything. Pray about what you desire. That means, you know what I'm saying? Define your fast. What is this fast about? Maybe one or two things that you're really focused on that you want to get a breakthrough on. Put some thought into your fast. This, this fast, I, these are two things that I really want to see a breakthrough in my personal life. Go after it. You're exercising your faith. God see, when you start fasting, it gets the whole attention of heaven. We're going to cover that Sunday. It gets the whole attention. When a man or woman fasts with a purpose, heaven stops and they start going to war on that person's behalf. That's why the devil hates fasting. Because it, it causes the army of ho of the, of the, of the armies of living God to come in on your behalf. I, it's real. That's why, that's why Elijah could say there's more for us than against us. It doesn't matter who's coming against us. We're fasting. We're praying. God is for us. And it doesn't matter how it looks in the physical. We already know the devil's outnumbered. Come on. It's someone's faith building already. This is what fasting does. It builds your faith. What does fasting do? It builds your faith because you're hearing God. You're closer to God. And the last thing on a fast advice, expand. If, only, if you only come to church three times a month, go for, go for it and add another service. If you come only on Sundays, come on Wednesdays too. If you haven't started a discipleship journey, join one of the Holy Wars 1, 2, or 3. It's time to expand. If you haven't joined a ministry or a discipleship group or haven't started volunteering, this is the time to sign up. So the purpose of fasting is to expand. And remember, you're going to have a lot of free time now. Because all that time that you were using to eat, you could use for something productive. Some of you guys aren't going to know what to do with your life. Because eating was like you, your whole life revolved around eating. It's getting quiet up here again. Yeah, pastor, I'm feeling so lonely, I could die. <laughs> How many are ready to join this 21-day fast? Well, let's all stand up. Let's give the Lord a big hand. All right, we're going to do this. I know it's exciting now. There's going to be times you want to quit, but that's the same spirit, that same mindset that makes you want to quit is the same mindset that gets you to do silly stuff that just draws you away from God. And before you know it, you're backsliding. Before we leave here, I'm going to dismiss it just a second. You don't have to worry about it. I mean, some of you guys are going to eat your last meal tonight. I ain't start till tomorrow. I just found out about this stuff. <laughs> I got to pray about this. <laughs> now, no more praying. Just get you ready. We already know it's God's will, right? But I'm going to say I love you. God loves you. We're This church... If we want to be on fire, we're going to have to draw close to the fire. You want to be filled with the Spirit, you're going to have to be purposeful about that. If you want to overcome a temptation that's been struck, you've been struggling for years, you got to stop putting up with it. And who the sun says free is free indeed. I'm serious enough that I'm ready to do war on that, that addiction or that, or that habit. I'm done with it. The cycle has to break. You know the cycles that you've been in, you guys, they got to break. But before we leave here, I'm going to give an opportunity. For every single person to make up your mind, to make up your mind to do this. I'm going to serve God from here on out. There are those that right now, it's 2024, and it's time for you to recommit your life to the Lord. You know, if you walked away, just walk back. Who cares? No one's going to be saying, oh my gosh, what happened to them? You know what the devil tells you that? Do you know, sometimes you fall and you mess up and then the devil keeps you away from church because you think everybody knows about it. And even if they know about it, they got their own problems. You think they're thinking about you? That's why Jesus said, he without sin cast the first stone. Everybody can, nobody can throw a stone. I'm, I got struggles that I'm overcoming. You got struggles you're overcoming. And I'm just, I'm just right now on my lane 
fighting to overcome anything that would try to hinder me from fulfilling purpose, from being filled with God's love, from, for, from, from accomplishing everything that God wants me to accomplish. I'm, I'm God, or keeping me away from the Lord. So tonight, you're saying, Pastor, that's me. And, I, and there's only two, there's two groups. There's, there's a group that you need, you're a believer, and this is your moment. You don't need to come to Jesus later on in the year. You got to stop procrastinating. This is your time. And don't be ashamed. This is what's going to happen. When you give your life to Jesus, we're going to congratulate you. We're going to clap for you. And in heaven, they start a party for any sinner that comes back home. They love it. They're waiting for you. Heaven's waiting on your response. Come back. And what does he have? Mercy, compassion, love, forgiveness, and restoration for you. Eternal life. It's everything you're looking for. Jesus said, the peace that I give you, the world cannot give you. He wants to give you peace again. He wants to restore your life. He wants to forgive you and cleanse you of every single thing you've ever done. Leave here cleansed. Don't leave here the same way you came in. Don't leave here motivated. Leave here right with God. It's your moment. Recommit. It's time for you. It's your day. Now, we got a second group. There are those that are in this room, and I'm going to be real honest with you. You have a real problem, and every single one of us have the same problem. We're born with this problem. Um, we're, we're sinners and we've all sinned and this is I think we don't recognize this that the wage of sin is death that means the punishment for sin is death the price for sin is death and that word death means misery it means addiction it means ruin that you start ruining everything you have is a cycle of that and at the end hell forever and ever the judgment on sin eternal fire a lot of people don't like to talk about that well that's not politically correct it's biblically correct and Jesus talked more about, about, about punishment and judgment than he did about almost any subject. And the reason he did it, not because he wanted to hurt man. He, was, he didn't come to judge them. He came to warn them and save them. And if you, Jesus, it's only one name to call on. And what did Jesus do? He died for your sins. He was judged where we should have been judged. But he judged, he was judged and took the punishment for our sins. He died where we should have died. He went to hell when we should have went to hell. He suffered so we wouldn't have to suffer. This is your day. And if you call on Jesus, you can't save you. Now don't think this. I think if I go to, I, could, I think I'll go to heaven and I'll say, why? Don't think this, it's wrong. I think I'll go to heaven because I'm a good person. Understand this, there's no one going to heaven because there were good people. They're going to heaven. Heaven's not full of a whole bunch of people that were goody two shoes and got in there by the, by the because God was grading on the curve and they barely made it. That's not how it works. We're all sinners and we need to be saved. The only way you're going to get into heaven is receive Jesus and call on Jesus to save you. He'll forgive you, give you the gift of eternal life. Heaven is not for perfect people. Heaven is for forgiven people. God wants to forgive you and cleanse you and 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 take the condemnation and judgment away from you. He already paid the price. And this idea, either you pay it or he pays it. He goes, I paid it for you. I love you. Please come. This is your day. And he said, Pastor, I'm not sure if I'll die right now. I'll go to heaven. Don't leave here that way. I'm going to count to three. Say, Pastor, I need to recommit. Or I'm not sure if I'll die right now. I'll go to heaven. But I want to give my life to Jesus. When I count to three, raise your hand. Don't be ashamed. God's not ashamed of you. One, when I say three, I want you to raise your hand. Two, I want to recommit. I know your heart's beating right now, but don't you let nothing stop you right now. This is your moment. Be bold. Come on. Give your life to Jesus. When I say three, raise your hands. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to recommit. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. Saying that's me. I see that hand, baby. I see that hand. Proud of you. Come on. Someone's going to get set free. Come on. You come with your addiction. You come with your... I see those hands. I see those hands. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see that. Someone needs to get back on fire. You lost your fire. Come on. You're going through the motions. Come on. It's time to come back home. I want those to raise their hands to do me one more big favor. I want to pray with you. And this is your first step of following Jesus. I want you to leave your seat and come forward right now. Leave your seat, come forward. If you raise your hand, leave your seat and come forward. Now let's give them a way we're all outreach. Come on, clap. Come on, come on. The devil's losing one. Come on, the devil's losing one. Come on, the devil's losing one. Hallelujah. No condemnation. No condemnation. No judgment no addiction come on a brand new start a brand new day ask your neighbor you want to go up there I'll go up there with you ask your neighbor you want to go up there I'll go up there with you online it's your time 2024 come on the first service stand up right where you're at give your life to Jesus pray with us right now this is your moment 
hallelujah we break the power of the enemy now hallelujah God has a plan come on let's give him a hand come on come on first come on first altar call of 2024 is packed with souls come on the harvest is here come on let's give him a hand come on someone's gonna get delivered someone's gonna come on they're gonna get set free for decades of addiction okay now understand it's not by your power it's by his power okay not your power his power okay some of you guys came up here with a serious heartbreak no no one even knows the nightmare you've been living but God does and he loves you so much your life is tough and I would never say life is easy no life isn't easy it's tough but I've learned this I'm gonna you're gonna do it with God or without God and if you do it without God this is all you're gonna do is try to escape your own reality through numbing yourself, getting involved in all kinds of dysfunctional relationships, smoking weed, drinking, drugs, arguing, fighting, violence. It's just, it's, but it keeps getting worse. There has to be a day say, Jesus, I'm tired of doing it my way. And don't think you can't do it with him. Okay? God is not here to judge you. He's not here to punish you. He's here to save you. He's here to help you. He's here to fill you with strength, his strength. Okay? And what happens if you mess up, like I talked about in the fast? Get back up. That's it. You only lose if you stay down. You keep coming to church. You keep showing up to the classes. You keep letting us hug you and love you. You keep, we keep talking about it. We're, we're going to overcome this. Okay, we love you. We're family. I'll tell you this, we ain't going nowhere. Give us a year of your life. Don't let no one offend you out of church. Don't expect a perfect church because they know a whole bunch of perfect people. We all need help. Hey Amen. Come on. Someone, you might, someone might have a bad day. You might have a good day. Don't let that offend you. Don't get out of, don't, don't lose focus. We're going to give our lives to Jesus today. He's going to forgive you and then fill you with his Holy Spirit inside of you. But don't let this be a mental decision. Give your heart to him. A hundred percent. And that means that you're going to say, man, I'm committed. I'm going to show up to church on Sunday. I'm going to show up next Wednesday. I'm going to do this 21-day fast. And on the 24th through the 28th, I'm going to do a four-day run for Jesus in the house of God. I used to do a week run for the devil. I'm going to do a four-day run for Jesus in the house of God. Join Holy Warriors too. That's going to be Tuesday. And, and then next Sunday. Let's pray. Close your eyes, bow your head, and repeat after me. Say this. Say, Jesus, I thank you for loving me so much that you died on the cross. You were beaten. You were whipped for my sins. I'm the one that sinned. And you took my place. It should have been me. And you died for me. But you conquered death to give me a new life. Today, Jesus, I repent of my sins. I'm done doing it my way. Save me set me free and fill me now with your Holy Spirit with your fire today I'm born again I'm a disciple a follower of Jesus Christ for the rest of my life and devil I command you now get out of my mind get out of my body get out of my life in the name of Jesus I open my heart, Jesus, and I accept you and confess you as my Lord and Savior. Fill me now with your spirit. I receive the gift of forgiveness and eternal life. And I forgive everybody that hurt me too. I let them go, including myself. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. We love you. 2024 will be the best year ever just follow jesus press your life i want to make sure we need some help up here we need some leaders up here i probably need like 30 leaders up here make no one leave no one leave until we get your information we want to pray with you
I need another. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This couple here. This couple here. I need this, someone to help me here. I need some leaders come back this way, not that way. Right here. Thank you so much.